Life. What is life? In a simple sense, life is biology. Cells, plants, animals, what you'd expect, but also much greater than that. See, we humans are a product of stardust that's as old as the universe itself. The atoms that make up your body were once part of ancient celestial objects. So as we look deep into the night sky, studying what the universe has to tell us, in a way, we're studying ourselves. Life is the universe opening its third eye, observing itself, learning its capabilities, and deriving its own meaning. Just as many of us were told that in order to find meaning, we have to look within ourselves, it seems that the greater collective life that we are part of is an everlasting quest of the universe finding meaning within itself. Life is the universe developing memory. In the DNA of the fish in the deepest oceans, the leaves of the tallest trees, and within ourselves, we can find a rich history spanning billions of years of the trillions that came before us, a history that connects us all. Indeed, the origin of life is the true miracle that not only allowed us to wake up, but it's the miracle that allowed our seemingly infinite universe to wake up. So that bears the question, how does life even exist? One of the greatest mysteries to humanity is whether alien life exists on other planets. From dangerous Martians, to transforming robots, to blue man group inspired Wampanoags, we've had plenty of theories of what alien life could look like. That being said, there's no way to know until we actually find it. And we look to our own solar system as a gateway to answering this question. On Mars' surface, there appear to be empty channels that seem to have once been flowing with water. And this fact alone has many scientists believing that Mars may have been home to life at some point. Similarly, Jupiter's moon Europa is a water-filled world covered with a thick layer of ice. And because of this, scientists hypothesize that life could exist here as well. But regardless of where we look, our main indication of life existing on another planet is whether that planet contains liquid water. And if we do find such a planet, our findings could completely shatter our understanding of how life works, not only in outer space, but also here on Earth. So like an impoverished African child, it's become astronomers' relentless mission to find water. But why water? Sure, water is necessary for life on Earth, but who's to say that'd be true for life on other planets? The universe is massive. Surely there are aliens out there that don't rely on water, but instead from liquid mercury, or something even more poisonous to humans, like naturally formed Rubinoff. The universe could be infinite, yet we keep our sights on water. But again, why water? So to answer this question, we need to first discuss what it means for something to be alive. And this is kind of a gray area as scientists may disagree on the true boundaries of what life is. For example, some scientists consider viruses to be alive while others don't. But all in all, and in terms of searching for life on other planets, we'd be searching for these three things to consider something to be alive. First, compartmentalization. A life form needs to be able to contain itself from its surroundings. Humans have a barrier from the outside world, aka your skin, and within your skin, you have a bunch of organs that keep you going. A cell needs a lipid bilayer to separate its insides from its outsides, where it can also perform necessary actions. And the same with fish, fungus, trees, you get the idea. Two, the ability to metabolize. A life form needs to be able to take in energy and use it to fuel metabolic reactions. These chemical reactions are what allow an organism to properly move, grow, and maintain its inner environment. And an organism's ability to carry out these chemical reactions at a fast rate is absolutely essential, because if it had a slow metabolism, it might just end up looking like your mother. 3. The ability to reproduce. Lastly, a life form needs to be able to replicate itself. Reproduction is what allows an organism's genetic material to be passed on to the next generation and ultimately ensures the continuation of its species. If something miraculously became alive with the ability to compartmentalize and metabolize, but not the ability to reproduce, well, it'll just immediately become extinct. No apocalyptic asteroid required. Huh? Now, how alien life would reproduce is something we've probably never seen before on Earth. Even on Earth, the methods of reproduction vary greatly. You got budding, binary fission, and sexual reproduction, and these are all pretty unique. It's definitely a very intriguing idea to think about how aliens would pass on their genetic material. And I'm not saying that in a perverted way. That's what Reddit is for. So yeah, the ability to compartmentalize, metabolize, and reproduce. These are the three necessary components of life. And the presence of water is what allows these three components to develop in the first place. 
and if life was created in water, life will be found in water. But again, why water? First and probably most important, water is the universal solvent. Water is a great medium to allow organic molecules to diffuse and interact with each other. It's what allows for the formation of proteins and DNA, and the transportation of nutrients and waste. It's these properties that allowed life on Earth to begin in the first place, and scientists have experimented with this by placing a bunch of lipids in an aquatic environment. And just by randomly placing these lipids in water, they naturally form into a lipid bilayer, which is the shell of the cell. So this alone shows that water can create these compartmentalized objects, which can then become cells. Life is a bunch of chemical reactions, and you need a solvent for these compounds to react with each other, and there's no solvent better than water. Water also provides a shielded environment. Life requires a very specific set of conditions to properly function. For example, our internal body temperature needs to remain at around 98 degrees Fahrenheit for us to be healthy. Fluctuating only 10 degrees away from this would almost certainly kill us. Thankfully, we have water, which acts as a great temperature regulator. Because of its high specific heat, it takes a lot of energy to change water's temperature. This is why it takes a long time for water to boil, but only seconds for metal to heat up. Water also helps maintain a proper balance of fluids and regulates acid base levels. Another reason why water makes life more likely to be found is because of ice. See, ice floats on water, and this is a very unique property of water. Almost every other substance is denser as a solid than a liquid. See, if ice exists on a planet's surface, there could very well be an ocean underneath it, just like Europa. But if ice sank, it would kill everything underneath it, and then more ice would just form above it, preventing any life from ever developing. And there are reasons outside of biology that we look for water too. See, water is super abundant in the universe. Since hydrogen and oxygen are common elements, there's a lot of H2O. And since there's a lot of water out there, that increases our likelihood of finding a planet with water. And the more planets there are to search for, the more likely we are to find life. On a similar note, water is pretty easy to detect compared to other substances. Since its spectral signature is very distinct, we can identify if a planet has water from very far distances. And this allows us to increase our search radius, whereas other substances might narrow it. So yeah, water's pretty great. And if we do find aliens one day, they'll probably agree. So here's to meeting aliens and sharing a glass of water with them. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!